So there's a new idea that some dinosaurs may be juveniles of other much larger dinosaurs. And a new paper goes into this and a few other things. But there's a few precursors we need to get into first. First off, this hasn't been fully peer reviewed yet, so the contents are likely to change. The author just uploaded it to ResearchGate where it's openly accessible. Secondly, while some people have agreed that this seems like a reasonable theory, a lot more work needs to be done to establish how likely of a theory it actually is. As for the peer review process, this is the kind of paper that might be presented at a conference, like the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology. This year it's being held online again, which has caused some researchers to back out of participating. As I mentioned before, the author of this paper uploaded their research to ResearchGate, which is a great way for researchers to present their papers in an open access format. The author, Andrea Cow specifically suggests that some consignathids like Dervinator, Scuriomimus, and the Italian Scipionyx may be juveniles of much larger animals. In fact, Scipionyx is suggested to potentially be a juvenile of a Carcharodonosaur, some of the largest animals of the early Cretaceous. Now, the consignathids are usually classified as cerulosaurs. So this is a major change as it takes the consignathids we know and spreads them among multiple different groups. And there's a reason he did this. Juvenile consignathids are found relatively often compared to other dinosaur groups. This is especially true in European-based consignathids like Juravenator, Scuriomimus, and Scipionyx, and they're all relatively unspecialized. So while large theropods like the Carcharodonosaurus had specializations like massive skulls and reduced arms, the juvenile consignathids don't. And that's expected, because it's pretty hard to imagine a diminutive animal like Scipionyx trying to hunt the same massive prey that larger theropods would be hunting. So what did Cow do? Well, he created two different phylogenetic matrixes. In the first one, he entered everything as you normally would see it, with no differentiation between what would be considered adult traits and what might be juvenile traits. In this matrix, the juvenile European consignathids group with each other and, as might be expected, consignathus. And it's important to note that Cow used the larger French specimen of consignathus, which is sometimes considered a different species of consignathus. Consignathus corolesis versus Consignathus longipes from Germany. He also treated the French consignathid specimen as an adult, exempting it from the juvenile feature changes. And that brings us to the other phylogeny, where Cow uses what he calls ontogenetically unbiased local apomorphies, which means he only looked at traits unlikely to change as the animal got older, or to change ontogenetically. And that resulted in this tree, where the unchanged matrix of consignathus corolestes still groups with other solorosaurs, but the other consignathids don't. Instead, they're spread out at three different points. Gervinator pairs with Dubriolosaurus, Scuriomimus with Asphaltinator, which was a middle Jurassic theropod, which in itself needs more study, but was probably closer related to the megalosaurs, including Dubriolosaurus, and finally, Scipionyx groups with the Carcharodonosaurs, like the Spanish Concavenator and the North American Acrocanthosaurus. Now there's an entire paragraph in this paper that's dedicated to listing the features that Scipionyx had in common with allosauroids, like the Carcharodonosaurs, that the other consignathids didn't have. Some of these are having five premaxillary teeth in the frontmost upper jawbone and a prezygo epipophyseal laminae, which is an overlapping structure on a particular part of the vertebra. These are things not really seen in any solurosaurs, which include consignathids, but are found in allosauroids. So there's a chance that some of these juvenile consignathids may actually be juveniles of other much larger dinosaurs, which is super cool, but it also means that we may be able to tell more information from other groups as well. This means early solurosaurs may have been paleomorphic, meaning they kept juvenile traits into adulthood, which may also be the reason juveniles of other dinosaurs may have been placed here unintentionally. This is also true when we look at birds, which also keep a lot of juvenile traits into adulthood. For example, this may even be feathers, which may have developed on younger dinosaurs for warmth, may have stuck around longer in solurosaurs, 
and then ended up staying on permanently for later birds. Now there's still some animals missing, like the German specimen of Compsognathus, as well as Cynoceropteryx and the Brazilian Ubirajara, which, as my husband always says, should be returned to Brazil, but probably won't happen because of a new law. But Cynoceropteryx and Ubirajara are seemingly adults, so where they get placed phylogenetically could have some really interesting implications to this idea. Overall, this means there's still a lot of things we can still test with dinosaur phylogenies. Nothing's set in stone yet. There's always a new way to test a new idea or a new way to reinforce a pre-existing idea. The field is ever-evolving. <laughs>